Okay, hi everybody again. This is Dan Collins of the CUNY Kingsboro Math and Computing Department. And in this video, I'm going to introduce you to using assignment, uh, the assignment feature that's built into Blackboard, which is kind of nice. So fairly simple feature to get started with. So it's a nice thing to add to your toolkit. Um, it's one step up from, say, uh, accepting student assignments by email individually. Uh, and to be clear, what's going to happen here is you're going to give the student either an opportunity to write some text in Blackboard or even better to upload a file. And that file could be anything. It could be an image file. It could be a Microsoft Word file. It could be a PDF. It could be a C++ source code file. Um, and what's going to happen is you'll be able to grade that from within Blackboard and the grades just going to immediately appear in the grade center automatically. So as a prerequisite, to this video. I'm assuming that you did watch uh, my video on uh, getting started with the Grade Center or you already know about the Grade Center uh, or something like that. So as usual, I'm starting on the home page here, which is announcements, and I got to pick one of these um, uh, content locations in which I'm going to put the assignment. And to be perfectly frank, in my practice, I always make a dedicated new content area just for, uh, just to collect the assignments and tests. So if you want to do that, you would hover over this plus sign up here and you would pick content area, give it a name like my assignments or something like that, and then um, use that maybe for all your dedicated assignments. But I'm going to skip that for the purpose of this video. And just to keep things simple, I'm going to act like I'm going to put my assignment in the basic content area. So I'll click on that. So here I am in the content area and it is currently blank. Uh, so I will go about adding the first assignment here. I'm gonna hover over assessments and you can see that uh, among other options are tests or surveys. But for the purpose of this video, we're gonna be making an assignment. And what you'll see here is there actually isn't too much that you need to fill in here. Um, you do need to give the assignment a name. So maybe for this first one, I'll call it creatively assignment one. And uh, the instructions here are technically optional. Um, I actually always do fill in something here. Uh, like maybe in a programming course, I might actually be referring to an exercise out of the book. But nonetheless, I put the reference here. And I usually put some notes or extra hints or something like that. So I'm always putting, uh, putting in instructions here. I think that's a good idea. So maybe for this particular one, I'll say write a paper on the golden normal function. That might be nice. Okay, uh, you could attach files. I never do that. Uh, due date's probably pretty important. I, d I do actually do always attach a due date to um, these assignments. So maybe I will click on this and I will pick a date about a week from now as I do this. Generally, I like to inform students about a specific time. Uh, like currently in my classes, all the assignments are always due 9 p.m. on Sunday which allows me to uh, grade it, uh, grade stuff Sunday night, and then uh, have uh, the results and feedback for them Monday morning. Um, so I usually pick some kind of hour here that I can inform students about. Maybe for you, it's gonna be 11.30 p.m. I don't know, something like that. Um, note, uh, so a little, little side note, there's this text up here about the due dates. It says submissions are accepted after this date but are marked late. So keep in mind the Blackboard system does not just cut off system, uh, just does not cut off students just because of the due date. They actually can always keep submitting stuff, but you will see a flag uh, next to um, the submission and you'll make a decision about whether what you want to do about that. Maybe subtract points. Uh, personally, for time purposes, I just don't go actually grade them when they're late. Uh, in most circumstances. So that's up to you. Um, but keep in mind, again, Blackboard will actually let them um, file a thing at any particular time. You will need to fill in uh, points possible. So maybe this assignment is 20 points, like a lot of my stuff is. Uh, rubric, rubrics, uh, rubric grading is very interesting. I actually do use that, but I'm going to skip that for the purposes of this video. Availability is going to limit when the assignment's actually visible to students. So that would be a way of enforcing, um, uh, more strictly enforcing a particular due date that after a particular date, uh, it's actually just not visible to the student in Blackboard anymore at all and they can't actually get to it to make a submission. I used to use that for stuff. Frankly, I don't anymore. It's kind of a hassle to maintain all those dates and times and so forth. So I actually just skip that nowadays 
And if a thing comes in after the due date and has a little flag, I just don't don't grade it at all. So um, that's that's my current practice about that. So I'll just skip all this stuff. So all I actually filled in here, to be clear, was a title and uh, the instructions and the due date did fill that in and points possible. So just four things there and I'm all done on my end actually. I'll hit submit. So you can see that that assignment here with the title and the instructions have showed up um, in that content area. And just for comparison now, if I go over to the grade center, like we did in the last video, you're gonna see if I scroll over here that the uh, the system has automatically made a column for the grades for that assignment. I didn't click anything at all for that. And this column that we're looking at right now is linked to that assignment that we just made automatically. So Blackboard expects there to be a grade to these things and expects to put it in that particular column. Uh, for what it's worth, these other grades are the things we filled in on the prior video, just getting started with the Grade Center. So you did have to know about that in order to know where the assignment scores are going to land later on. So now let's pretend for a minute that we're a student and we're actually going to step through this and see what the student would see when they interact with the assignment. So what I'll do here is, and this is kind of a nice feature in Blackboard, this little, uh, uh, it sort of looks like an eyeball, but it's a, uh, it's, a, it's a circle with two arrows around it, is this button that says Enter Student Preview. So anytime you want, you can click that, and what it's going to do is it's going to show you exactly what the student would see interacting with your Blackboard module. And in this particular case, I think that's pretty useful. So Entering Student Preview here. It's going to send me back to the home page. And you notice here, just for argument's sake, that you do see the main menu. The whole um, instructor controls uh, are gone as uh, they're not accessible to students. And let's say the student now wants to go and submit their assignment. So they will go to content. Uh, they will see that particular assignment. They'll click on the title of the assignment right there. And what they would see here is it's going to remind them about the due date, right? the due date and time. It's going to remind them the points possible. If you're using rubric grading, uh, there'll be a little button right here uh, in my classes that'll show the exact grading rubric that the instructor plans to use. And uh, two options, basically, of the student. If they're just going to write text in Blackboard itself, they would hit Write Submission. Okay, so here's a box. They can write text. Um, I actually have never had an assignment that uses that. What I do down here is I have students attach a file, you know, upload a file. And for that, under Attach Files, they're going to go to Browse My Computer. And let's say that, uh, that, that as the hypothetical student, that's what I'm doing here. And I have written my assignment as a, and stored it as a PDF file for what that's worth. And I'll just uh, hit Open here. And you can see... This is a lot like when you're adding content to, um, when you're adding documents to a content area under add item, right? Here's the files we're about to attach. We could, um, uh, we could, uh, we could uh, delete that and avoid that if we wanted to. Students can add comments. I never asked for that, but occasionally, uh, since that's here, I will get occasional comments from students. Like, I had a really hard time with this assignment. Please go easy on me or something like that. Uh, but that has nothing to do with the grading. So the student has attached the file here and they will hit submit. And interestingly, so now the student will actually get, and actually this is news to me as of tonight, so the student will actually get a confirmation number. Um, it's, they're getting a receipt that the system actually did accept their assignment. So that's kind of interesting. They could copy and save this. This has never come up in any of my courses to date, but um, I guess maybe at some point it would. Uh, kind of confirming to the student, because again, we're in student preview mode again, uh, kind of confirming to the student what they, what they have uploaded here and they have an opportunity to double check and make sure they didn't make a mistake. Um, and here is the points that they're going to get when any time it gets graded and things like that. They could actually re-download it by this arrow here. They could get it back if they, if for some reason they, they lost it on their own system. And the student now knows that uh, the assignment has actually been submitted. So that's done on their end. Now I'm going to go up here and I'm going to exit the student preview and we'll go back to uh, the role of the instructor and see what the instructor would do at this point now that the assignments have been submitted. So I'll click Exit Preview. And 
Uh, so a couple of op options here, specifically when you're using that student preview, because uh, remember we were pretending that we were a student there. We did submit thing something. Alternatively, maybe we could have taken a test, right? And what the system is asking us right now is here is what do you want to do with those submissions or those scores? Do you just want to trash them because they're not they're not important? That's actually this first thing that's recommended. Or do you actually want to keep them? temporarily and actually see them in the grade center, which is kind of unusual. And uh, I did that once accidentally in the past and didn't know how to get rid of it actually. Um, uh, but I'm going to, I'm actually going to do that just to see what it looks like in the grade center. I'm going to keep that data in this particular case. And at the point when I personally want to get rid of that, I'll have to go back into student preview mode and then exit again and then click the first button here. And then it will trash that fake, that fake student data. So that's a little bit of a meta issue that isn't really core to this video, but that's how I'm getting the example done at the moment. Okay, so here we are back in normal instructor view. And let's say the instructor wants to go grade these things. They'll go to grade center actually. And you can see here that uh, there's a little flag, there's a little yellow exclamation mark saying that, uh, telling us that this fake student Daniel Collins preview here, who doesn't have any other grades right now, um, has actually submitted an assignment for this, doesn't have any grade yet, Right. This is this is an assignment that needs grading currently. And maybe if there was more than just these two fake students, there might be a whole bunch of these showing up. And at this point, the, the instructor can go to the, uh, the, the column header and on the little drop down arrow, what I would do is I would pick grade attempts. And this gives us an interface here to go through and just grade all the assignments in kind of an efficient uh, manner here. So I'll click on grade attempts. And now we're in this new interface here, the, the grade assignment interface. And you can see I only have one gradable item. If there was more than that, you could use this arrow here to, um, uh, to um, move from one student submission to the other. And pretty nice, the, the PDF that I submitted here just shows up here in this interface immediately in Blackboard. You don't have to download it. Uh, you can just view it immediately. I think that this box, uh, this box, uh, interface, which I think is something that the Blackboard company actually bought out another company or something like that is, is why that has different uh, uh, different trademark there. It'll support Microsoft Word documents. It'll support uh, CPP uh, source code files. It'll support images and uh, a whole bunch of other things. Uh, there's a there's a couple, you know, it won't it won't do any arbitrary type of file, but anything probably anything you want to deal with will show up here. So you can just read that right here and over on the right. Um, uh, there's no prior graded attempt because, again, this would allow uh, this could allow the student to submit multi -sub multiple submissions if you clicked a particular button back in the um, in the original assignment creation. But it's waiting for you to type in a grade right here, right? So you can just click on here anytime you're ready uh, that you've decided what the grade is. And there's also a text box for extra feedback to the learner. So I'm always encouraging my students to um, read that once I submit a grade there, which is which is kind of nice, maybe come to an office hour if they have questions. If you want to download the document locally, you would you would click on this down arrow right here. I guess I'll just get started with that, right? And it'll ask you where do you want to save it, and you could have it locally if you wanted to. I'm gonna skip that for now, but I would read this document and go, wow, that's really nice work actually, good job, um, uh, theoretically. And uh, maybe I'm so happy with this particular assignment, I'm gonna give them the full score of 20 out of 20. Um, uh, uh, so it looks pretty good, uh, but maybe I'll put in some feedback and say next time, uh, try to be less verbose or something. I don't know, I guess I say that once in a while. So there you go, so just there's a number and there is some feedback and you hit submit, records that. And if I had more than one assignment there, what would happen is you'd hit a, you'd hit a right arrow up there, go to the next student assignment. But since that was the last assignment that needed grading, it just immediately said, well, we're done, threw us back to the grade center. And now you can see here that uh, the assignment score is in the right uh, box there and is already being included in the, um, uh, the overall weighted total. Because you can see here that uh, that student's weighted total that was zero a minute ago is now at least includes that particular assignment of 7.50% uh, for the weighted total. Keep in mind that, remember all the columns in Blackboard, uh, the Blackboard Grade Center have a category attached to them. Well, the assignments that we make 
are automatically categorized as assignment. So you kind of want a little bit of forethought about how you're, we're using these different tools in Blackboard so that you don't collide with categories. And to be clear, like right at the moment, I actually do have homework one and homework two, which were manu manually entered, categorized assignments. And this assignment is categorized as an assignment. Uh, so um, you do kind of want to be a little bit careful about that. Any of these things, you can change their categories. You can make up new categories. Uh, but I'm going to skip that for now and just say by default, when you make an assignment, it's automatically categorized as an assignment in the Grade Center. So that's basically it, actually. So kind of a nice interface. Uh, just a couple things you need to enter to make one of these assignments. Uh, I don't have complaints, really. Maybe the very first week, students are asking how do they submit something. Uh, maybe they, you know, they expect that they're going to email it, and you just have to... Uh, you know, obviously I give instructions on my syllabus, maybe just a little bit of hand holding. And after the first week, I never really have any problems about people, uh, about the students interfacing with how they're going to submit assignments like that. So pretty clean. I honestly just started using this uh, a couple years ago when I was teaching more computer science programming classes. That's how I do all my programming assignments. And I've been pretty happy with it. That's kind of a nice feature. Uh, built into the Blackboard uh, that automatically hooks up to the Grade Center, which I like. So that's it for this video. I hope that's helpful. Uh, if you want to add assignments to your toolbox, uh, one of the uh, one of the smaller steps you can take um, to make your life a little bit more efficient, I guess. And so if you have any questions or comments or you want more detail about that, feel free to email me uh, with the Kingsborough email. And I would look forward to, um, uh, to helping you further if I could. And I'll talk to you next time.